ವಿ ಗಣಪತಿ ಸ್ಥಾಪತಿ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಬೋರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಗಣಪತಿ ವಾಸ್ ದಿ ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವೈದ್ಯನಾಥ ಸ್ಥಾಪತಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ವೇಡ ಮಾಲ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಫಾದರ್ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಬಿಲ್ಡರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮಾತೃ ಬುದ್ಧೇಶ್ವರ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಅಟ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರಮಣಾಶ್ರಮ ದಿ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ದ ಲೇಟ್ ವಿ ಗಣಪತಿ ಸ್ಥಾಪತಿ ರೈಟ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಟು ಮಹರಿಷೀಸ್ to whom he attributes his enormous success in restoring and elevating the status of traditional Hindu architecture in modern Indian society and throughout the world. During my formative period as a student and during my professional career as a stapati, I had the good fortune of coming under the influence of two Maharishis of worldwide renown. During my boyhood from 1939 to 1949, my father, Sri Vaidhanath Stapati, was working as the architect and builder of Sri Mathrubodeshwara Temple at Sri Ramanasharamam in Tiruvannamalai. This was the temple built over the Samadhi of the Holy Mother who gave birth to Bhagavan Ramana. I was around 13 when my father started building the temple and also sculpting the holy image of Bhagavan Ramana in stone. The Maharishi appears to have scarcely spoken to devotees, however devoted they were. But fortunately, he used to talk to my father whenever he approached him for advice on any issue. I used to stand by his side on such occasions. In the meantime, for the sake of my education, my father had to shift to Salem for the construction of a temple there. I did my SSLC and intermediate in the local college. Still, my father and I used to visit the Maharishi on work. During such visits, I closely watched the face of the Maharishi, which was always lustrous whenever the talk turned to our family affairs and on me. He never inquired about my studies, but he used to look at me with a kind smile which I interpreted as a flow of grace. One fine morning, the results of the intermediate examination appeared in the newspapers. To our surprise, there was a call from the Maharishi to which my father and I responded at once. All the time, there was a large gathering of devotees in what is called Bhagwan's Hall. There was a newspaper in the hands of the Maharishi. Both of us standing near his Yogasana, he spoke to the devotees with inestimable joy, saying, Stavati's son has passed the examination with a distinction. His future is going to be very bright. We were dumbfounded. Not even a word of thanks could be uttered. So much were we choked by joy. In response, we could do nothing but to prostrate before him and silently take his blessings. The next thing for my father to do was to send me to the engineering college, Gindi, Madras. It was in 1947 that I applied and without any difficulty got a seat thanks to my high marks. But my father's dream did not come true. Though my father was then a leading stapati in the field, he had no financial resources. The fee that I had to pay at the time of admission was only 480 rupees. But for hostel and other expenses, one had to pay around 300 rupees per semester. This was our problem. It was too much for him as his monthly remuneration was only 100 rupees. Because of this, he was unable to make any decision for or against the engineering college. Though he was poor, he never during his lifetime approached anybody for financial help. His idea was to send me to the engineering college and utilize the knowledge of modern science and technology for the better understanding of the Vastu tradition and that I should work to promote and revive it. Before he could take a decision, the date of admission expired 
and the whole family was upset. With stoic endurance, my father kept silent for months. He never went even to the Maharishi for advice or help. A few months later, the Maharishi called my father to his side and said, In your own native place, a new college has now been established and it will start functioning from 15th of August 1947. I feel that it is only for him, meaning me, that this college has been started late in the year. Taking the Maharishi's words as divine direction, my father lost no time to admit me there. Unfortunately, it was not an engineering college. In the BA class, teaching pure mathematics as expected. The curriculum was different, but it was no other than the famous Dr. Alagapachatya College, which was opened in Karekudi on the first India Independence Day. I was too young to understand that this turn of events would be for the better and highly conducive for my career as a Stapati later in life. We had full faith in the words of Maharishi and took the journey along the path he indicated. Only after I took up Stapati ship did I realize the value of the Maharishi's direction. I am happy to say that it is because of his blessings that I am what I am today. The world around me knows today to what extent I have fulfilled my father's dream. I am proud to say that I have gone up several steps ahead of my father's expectation. This is because of another Maharishi's intervention and direction that I was blessed with a career as a Stapati. The other Maharishi under whose influence I came next was His Holiness Paramacharya of Kanchi. I had to leave the position of his Tapati that I was enjoying under the Parani Andavar Devasthanam Parani in 1961 to assume the principalship of the School of Sculpture and Architecture, a position my father had held from 1957 to 1960. My father had to retire as he fell seriously ill. He had a severe stroke followed by a paralytic attack and was unable to speak. Even expert medical treatment was of no use. Finally, on the advice of Sri S. Ganesan, Tamban Adipudi, I took him to Palayarpati near Karakudi for Ayurvedic treatment. Sri S. Ganesan was my godfather since my early days. Even this Ayurvedic treatment produced no results. It was around this time in 1963 that I met Parmacharya when he was camping at Elayatangudi, a village about 10 miles from Palayarpati, where I was born. I had never met him before, though my father had known him intimately for many years. The intimacy between Parmacharya and my father was at its all-time high when he was commissioned to build a stone mandapam in the premises of the Kanchi Mad. This is the mandapam where pujas are performed today. We continued.